What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Rich Nice back once again. So today we're out in the shop. Uh, we're working on Project Smoke. As you can see, uh, he's stuck over here in the corner. We're going to have to do some rust repair on the rockers, inner and outer, cab corners, probably the rear floor. Uh, once we get the seats out, we'll be able to dive more into it and see exactly what we need. We're going to relocate, uh, relocate the gas tank, which is behind the seats. We're going to put it underneath the bed. Um, so yeah, work in progress, but before we do that, uh, I will show you what we have that's going to go in it right now. It has a 305, uh, with a three speed manual in it. And you can see there's a gear shift right there. So we're going to get rid of that. You can see you got that third pedal. So we're going to get rid of that. And we're going to put this in it. So this is an LS uh, motor. It's a 5.3 liter. It came out of a 2004 Tahoe. Uh, the biggest thing to make sure when you get in these, and I could be wrong, but you know, I'm sure y'all tell me in the comments if I'm wrong, is to make sure you get the, uh, the fuse box that goes underneath the hood, which I went back and I got that, and it's right here. So this is the fuse box that goes underneath the hood. You'll need that. <clears throat> and you also need the pedal. This is the gas pedal. And you'll need this little box that goes with the gas pedal. So with these two things, we should be able to uh, drop this in and have not, not have any issues. Uh, the other thing you have to do is because this is an LS swap, you'll have to take your computer, which is right here, and you'll have to go have it, um, the VAT removed, which is the vehicle anti-theft. So you'll have to have that removed, you'll have to send it out or take it to someplace local, um, and they will remove that. Uh, also, make sure you get your transmission. This is our transmission. This is a 4L60E uh, automatic transmission. So we're going from a manual to an automatic. Woohoo! Um, once we do that, we should be good to go. Um, again, this motor supposedly had 132,000 miles on it. I don't know. Uh, we'll get it cleaned up, put it with some degreaser, some things like that. Um, it does have AC, which is a plus because, you know, brother don't like the heat. Um, also, we, uh, when we picked this up, we used the crane, which is right here, or engine hoist. It came from Harbor Freight. And this engine stand, as you can see, came from Harbor Freight. So I put both of those in the, uh, down in the description. The easiest way to put your motor onto your engine stand is to take this piece right here with these arms. These uh, are adjustable, so you can adjust it however you want, uh, is to take this black piece off. There's a C-clip that's located right here. You gotta take that C-clip off, uh, pull your handle out, and also pull your safety pin. Make sure you always keep this in here because if not, your engine will wanna rotate on you. So this is your safety pin. So you make sure you keep that in there. Also, um, adjust these. Now, I didn't have any uh, transmission bolts. So these bolts are four inches long and they're 10 by 1.50 is a thread pitch. And I got these from uh, Ace Hardware. So I think it was probably six, seven bucks and you need four of them and because they are so long, because I didn't know exactly how long I needed. I went ahead and got four inches, and as you can see is I got spacers in here. So there's four washers on each one, which gives me enough space to uh, securely put it on here. Um, once you do that and you attach this black piece to your engine, then you can bring your engine stand over and the easiest way I found was to remove this bottom piece. There's a bolt that's located right here. You unscrew that, 
this bottom piece will slide out. Then you'll take this piece, you'll put it on the back of your engine stand, put your C-clip and all that stuff on it to make sure it's secure. Then you'll slide this piece back in, bolt it down, and then you'll be able to drop your engine. And uh, what we use with the crane is just a chain and there's a bolt right here. And we use this bolt right here. And there's plenty of places that you can uh, mount these. And this is an actual ground, so it's a good thing. So this is your bolt to your uh, alternator. So we'll bolt some stuff to that that's grounds and things like that. Um, next is I'll show you how to depend all this. So we have a white connector that goes here that I'm currently working on. We have this black connector, which is this black connector right here that goes in. So this powers everything that's in here. You will need the white connector and you'll need pin A9. Again, pin A9 and it'll go across A, B, C, D, E, F. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And the numbers are, they go down. I'm not sure if you can really see that on this one. Um, but right there are the numbers and then the letters go across the top. Uh, but anyway, you'll need a pink wire. It's a big fat pink wire from this white block. We'll take this block out, put our block in from our stock harness. And then on this block right here, this red block, you won't need this green block, but on this red block to run your fuel pump uh, and use your relay that's in here, uh, you'll need this gray wire, which should be, I believe, F11 or something like that, or F1, I'm sorry, F1. So you need F1 and you'll need um, A9. And with those two wires, you're positive, connected to your battery. Uh, you'll need a fuel source and we'll be able to make this thing run on the engine stand. So I will show you how to do uh, depend these. And once I do that, we'll be back. To, <clears throat> so here's our white connector uh, as you can see we have a bunch of wires the only wire we need off of this connector is this wire right here which is a9 a9 so it's one two three four five six seven eight nine yeah nine right here one two three four five six seven eight nine this one so this one so before you can uh, take these pins out you'll have to pull this safety out and basically this just slides out kind of like this and then once you once you pull it out uh, they'll come out and then you'll be able to push these pins through uh, I'm not going to throw any of these away because we may need these for some reason later on and they already have the connector on them so it just makes sense. Uh, and I bought these off of uh, Amazon. So I bought these off of Amazon and basically I'm using the little fork right here as you can see. 
uh, and basically you find them. So this is four down. So one, two, three, four. So this one, we'll push it in. And as you can see, it pops right out the back, just like that. And if we go over one, it should be another one. So we'll come over here, push this in, just like that. And they'll pop out. So. All right, so this is what it looks like when you pull this little blue thing out. It looks just like this. Uh, now I'll take this one, stick it on this side over here. Just like this. And we'll start pushing these other ones out. So, <clears throat> All right, YouTube, we got all the wires out. As you can see, there was one wire that didn't want to come out, this orange one. Uh, if you look right here, it's right there where that burn mark is, just to the left of that burn mark. So it did not want to come out. So we will tape it up and leave it in there. Uh, we have our ignition on. And then over here <clears throat> on the red, we have our fuel pump, which is this gray wire. So these are all the wires that we took out. And we'll keep those because they have the little clips on them or whatever. So if we need to add something back in, we can. Other than that, thank you for uh, watching. Like, subscribe, hit the bell. Because uh, next, we're going to try to start this engine on a stand. And you, wanna, you don't want to miss that. Uh, we're just waiting on a couple of parts to come in the mail. Uh, once we get those, we should be good to go. Until then, peace.